Thank you. Can you hear me well? All right. Uh, so, uh, thank you for waking up early. Uh, you know it's hard. So, um, first I would like to talk about uh, things that I have here. I have an access point here, just if the uh, Wi-Fi won't work up, uh, because uh, I, will have, I will show you separate, uh, several demos. Uh, I have an iPhone 7 for demo purposes as well. Um, I will need someone to help me out with the demo later. So this is a Tesla 2 device. I don't know have you heard, if you have heard about it. Um, it can run an OJS application, but currently I'm using it as an access point. So today I'm going to talk to you about WebRTC, about WebRTC basics, uh, about how the negotiation works in WebRTC, and um, uh, what's the current browser support and things like that. So get, let's get right into it. So a little bit of introduction. My name is Gabriel Michko, as uh, the MC said. Uh, I like attending conferences, speaking to people. Uh, you can see my Twitter, Facebook, and uh, email. So if you have any questions, just shoot me an email or um, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I often tweet about WebRTC stuff. OK, so I've been volunteering for Mozilla for like five years. Uh, I've been a tech speaker for two years. If you haven't heard about tech speakers yet, uh, this is a group consisting of 70 or 80 people uh, around the world. The tech speakers program is a two, three week long, uh, actually it's six week long program where they help you to learn how to present yourself in front of the stage, how you make presentations, they give you advices, they coach you and things like that. Um, it has many benefits, like going to conferences like these and uh, meeting a lot of great people. I work at Dockler Holding, uh, especially in Dockler SSC. Uh, this company is based in Hungary, in Budapest, uh, but we have we have a company. We have actually offices all around the world. Um, in Luxembourg is our uh, headquarters. I work in the biggest project called Live Jasmine. Probably you heard about it already from some, advice, some advertisements. Um, yesterday I checked the ranking of Live Jasmine and it's the 59th most visited websites of the world. So I think it's quite good. I work um, in a streaming team working on uh, streaming tech things, and uh, we are currently experimenting around WebRTC, how we can stream WebRT with using WebRTC. So this is one of the reasons I'm super interested in this. Okay, so what is WebRTC? Uh, how many of you have used WebRTC before? How many of you have production code? Okay, one, one hand. Okay, so I hope that this is going to be helpful for you. Uh, it's been, I think, seven years in 2011 when Google released WebRTC as an open source, source project for browser-based real-time communication. Uh, WebRTC provides browsers and mobile applications uh, with real-time capabilities. Since then, many vendors, many browser vendors have uh, supported and backed WebRTC, such as Mozilla or Microsoft. So uh, let's get right deep into it. WebRTC is a real-time communication. It's an API that provides support for browser-to-browser -browser applications, for voice calling, video chat, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, and screen sharing. Of course, without the need of external or internal plugin. So it means you won't have to install, or the users won't have to install anything if they want to use your applications. It's meant to be rich and high quality. It means that the quality of the stream should be like high quality, and uh, the, it should support, or WebRTC should be able to run in browsers mobile platforms, Android, iOS, and IoT devices as well. For example, Raspberry. 
Uh, it uses the UDP transport layer, uh, so not TCP, but there are times when it fall back, falls back to TCP. And the uh, connection is super secure by uh, DTLS. DTLS is a security solution for UDP. OK, so I'm going to uh, show you one demo that I created. And I would like to ask somebody from the audience who is brave enough to help me with this. Um, I have this iPhone connected to the Wi-Fi. And I will, what we will have to do is um, logging into the web application. I will show you just in a sec. Let's pause mirror. OK, now you should be able to see my screen. That's great. Oh, yeah, and you might notice that I'm using Chrome. That's uh, because there are some limitations in, in the API in the Firefox. Uh, and I'm going to use one demo that, that, that I was not able to by, bypass this limitation. Uh, you, I will explain that uh, later. Why is that? So I'm here in Chrome. And what I'm going to do is um, log into this, to this page. By the way, this is available. Um, uh, and at um, dialin.webrtc.rocks. And also the talk is available at tarox.webrtc.rocks. So you can follow up there. OK, so let me log in here with one, two, three, four. So let's say this is my phone number. So who wants to help me with this? Anyone? The there, OK. Great. Sorry, should I pay you? Um, you can come with me if you want. Yeah, yeah let's give it a round of applause. <laughs> All righty. So he is basically seeing the same page as I do. Is it true? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, so you need to uh, enter one of random telephone number like one, two, three. Okay, and then hit save. Okay. OK, you have been logged into the server. Mm -hmm. Now try to call me. That's OK. Call? Uh, call, no. Sorry. Call your buddy. Enter my number. It is 12344. Okay. Call. OK, so he's calling me right now. I'm going to accept that. I already gave the permissions. He's going to have to give the uh, permission. And now we are able to see each other. You just have to press okay. the play. And I'm um, here, right here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's give him a round of applause, please, one more time. Cool. OK, let's go back to the slides. Great. So as I said, dialin.webrtc.rocks. You can try it. And by the way, it's open source. So you can download the server and the client as well from, uh, from GitHub. It's not 100% working, but uh, for demo purposes, it's good. So I hope you feel like this guy. <laughs> uh, every time I do this demo, I feel like this. OK, so before I show the code and uh, before I try to teach you how you can build these kind of applications, you have to understand few things. So there are these two clients that want to connect to each other. Uh, how, I'm, how we are going to achieve this? Uh, I think we need some magic here. Actually, it turns out it's not magic, but it's called a signaling server. And uh, the signaling server is not a part of the WebRTC specification, but you can do it anyhow you want. And uh, I always do it with WebSockets because that's real time. But you can use uh, AJAX, or you can, uh, you can actually avoid using signaling if you already know who are you calling. But, uh, that's a, a rare case. And so the peers have to log in to this signaling server and uh, share few information. So, 
Signaling server is used for negotiation. There are ne necessary informations being generated by RTC peer connection. So the RTC peer connection will generate for us offer, answer, and ICE candidates. Uh, but I will talk about that in the next slide. Um, so STAN server, what is STAN server? STAN server is for detecting your public IP address. <coughs> You don't have, have to worry about implementing it. There are open source softwares already, like Cotern, uh, which are stable and uh, ready to use. So the stun you can imagine as like going to whatsmyip.org, where the service will return you your public IP address. OK, um, what is Turn Server? So stun server is used when the connection cannot be um, connection, connection cannot be um, initiated for some reason. For example, the firewall. It, you have an enterprise firewall, and it's not a, the two clients are not able to connect because this because of this uh, firewall. So the stun, they can turn to to turn server and uh, get the stream from the turn server. Okay, this is how it looks, how the code looks like. Um, you have to use uh, RTC peer connection and pass the I servers. So there will be a, a host for the I servers in the parameter. Um, so for audio and video calls, you will need to use two things. Uh, one of them is given by uh, navigator.media devices, and the second is the RTC peer connection. The RTC peer connection does the magic for you. It creates and man manages session descriptions. It basically sets up audio calls and video calls, and also uh, can, can the data can be shared. Uh, so what is get user media? Uh, probably you already know what it is. Get user media is being used when you want to access the camera. You can specify the resolution. You can specify whether you want to access the microphone only or the, uh, the camera only, so audio or video, and many more details. Like um, in the RTC peer connection, you can specify bit rates and uh, many, many more things. OK, so um, you, well, the next thing you have to learn is session description protocol. Session description protocol dates back to 90s. Many real-time communication softwares, uh, such as Skype, uses it. It is a string-based uh, card, let's say business card. Um, you can imagine it like uh, your business cards that you share with someone. You give your business cards, and you, there is written your name and uh, what you are capable of. But imagine it as a business card for computers where uh, the computer will describe audio and uh, video codec support or network lookup or computer data weight and things like that. And uh, this is string-based because it needs to be easy to transport from one place to another. OK, so the RTC session description is generated by the RTC peer connection. And when, when you create an offer, you basically get an SDP. And uh, when you are giving the RTC peer connection the SDP, you would use RTC session description and uh, pass this string in the, in, as a parameter. OK, RTC ICE candidates are providing information about how you can connect to the other peer. And RTC data channels are, are um, allowing you to send data or send uh, information peer-to-peer uh, -peer through for the other peer. OK, so let's uh, see how this works. So there are two, two people wanting to connect to each other. First, first client will have to create an offer with the, with the usage of RTC peer connection. 
So once the offer is being created on the client side with that JavaScript API, you would have to send that to the signaling server. And the signaling server will know or have the business logic and can determine which client you want to send that SDP to. So it forwards it to the other client. And the other client will apply, will apply that session description to the RTC peer connection and will create an answer for that. And then it sends it back to the signaling. And then actually the same will happen. The signaling will determine who, who the session description belongs to and it will send the, the answer back to the first client. Okay. In the meantime, there are ICE candidates generated. As I said, ICE candidates will determine how, how to connect to each other. And they are being shared over the signaling as well. So once that's done and the uh, network is working properly, you will have a, co a connection. Okay, great. So. Let's do, let's see some code, how this works. I'm going to, to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial that I built. You can follow it in webrtc.rocks as well. It's available. Okay, let me go back to a single mode. And uh, this one, we don't need it. Okay. So I'm running this demo locally, but as I said, you can access it here at webrtc.rocks if you want to. Uh, I go to lessons, jump to lessons, and want to be a hero. Okay, we will follow this code on the right side, and by clicking do it, I will run the snippet here. And uh, you can see that, that this, this text has a white color, and this one is green, and this one is blue, and it means that the, the white means that both parties would have to run this code. The left, or the, on the left side, you can see the, the green one. It means that one of the clients have to do it, and the blue one is that the second client would have to do it. But now what I'm going to try to achieve is that sending this video, so sending from one client to another, but in, in the same browser, I can do it. Okay, so let's run the, let's see the code here. There is a get user media where I say that I want to access the video and I want to access the audio. And it will return for me a promise and that promise will contain the media stream and I will have to attach the media stream to that element. Okay, so I'm going to do it. Now I can see myself. Uh, it's currently muted. Cool. So here are some of the iServers config, iServer configuration. I'm using Google Stun Server for this. Um, here I'm creating a new RTC peer connection. As you see, it, have to, it has to run in both sides. And then I'm subscribing to ICE, candidate, uh, to ICE candidate listener and to the on track listener. The on track will give me the media stream from the remote uh, from the remote side. Let's do it. Okay. So now there are no ICE candidates generated, but if there will be, it will append it to this uh, box. Okay, so now I will have to attach the media stream to the peer connection. So this is a media stream, and I will have to add it to the peer connection. So, it will, so the instance will contain the stream. Okay, that's been added. So the next step is creating an offer, as, as I showed you previously. You will have to create an offer with the constraints that saying, RTC uh, offer to receive audio, offer to receive video. It means I want to get a video. I'm expecting a video and the audio. By the way, this is um, already outdated, but uh, you have to use it if you want to make it work on iOS. 
All right, so create an offer and then set this offer, set this SDP as a local description. Okay, so the offer now is being generated. I'm going to copy it. So send the offer uh, to the other side. Now it says you should use your own signaling solution. In this case, I will be the signaling by myself, so I just copied the offer. So on the other side, the other client now will receive this offer. Receive, so I'm going to paste it. Okay, you see I'm creating a RTC session description because I copied a string, but it has to have a, a object representation. And I'm going to set this SDP as a remote description. Okay, now you ha would have to send ICE candidates in the meantime. Uh, this is the, this pop-up says the same, that you, you have to use your own signaling. So I will be the signaling, and I can see the array of candidates. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of the candidates that have been generated by the time. And I'm going to say that I want to copy these array of, of ICE candidates and iterate through them and add it to ICE uh, add it to the peer connection. Okay, now I will create an answer for, for the offer. Here is the answer. Set an answer on the remote side. So the remote PC will now know that uh, the SDP that has been generated as an answer is, is belo it belongs to the remote uh, peer connection. So now I would have to send back that, that answer to the, to the local site, to the uh, first client. There are various solutions for signaling, so I will do it. Receive an answer SDP. I'm going to paste it and set it as a remote description on the first side. And now if everything works, we would have to see, yeah. So now I can, I can see a successful um, connection. If you want to, to debug uh, the WebRTC connections in Chrome, in Chrome you would say um, WebRTC logs uh, Chrome. and uh, WebRTC internals and logs. Let's see the internals. You will see that there are two peer connections uh, being generated and you can debug them if you want to. As you see, it's not very user-friendly. Uh, the, the ones that uh, there are in Firefox are better a little bit and they are more usable. Okay, so now this is done, and uh, I'm going to, as a last step, I'm going to close the connection and stop the stream. Okay, I thought well, there was a little bit of delay, but the, they, they stopped. Uh, it stopped the, the connection. Okay, let's go back to the slides. All right. Yeah, so you might think of <laughs> like that guy. Uh, but so the, the understanding of uh, WebRTC and how it works is, uh, is a long process, I think. But uh, you, can, you can, there are many good examples that you can learn from. And I will, uh, if you download the presentation at the end, I will show you a couple of things that you can uh, learn from. Okay, so, so let's, uh, let's talk about cool things, uh, cool WebRTC things that I, uh, I like. You can take Canvas as a source of the video stream, so you might want to, to share that you are drawing on a canvas. You, you are able to do it, or actually you can pass, or you can give the canvas to the, your uh, video stream, and then you can draw on the video stream and you can share it. You can use screen sharing. 
Um, you can use simulcast support. Um, it's been it's been implemented. Ice restart. Ice restart means when you are on the way, for example, with your car and you are using your phone, and um, let's say that you have been using 4G and now you switch to Wi-Fi, you can do ice restart and uh, reinitiate the connection. Okay, and uh, finally, the WebRTC API is 100% promise-based, so you are, you are using promises by writing code, so that's cool. Okay, let's see some statistics. Uh, this statistic have been measured uh, last year, uh, in end of end of last year. There are 1.5 billion weekly Chrome audio and video minutes, and it, you can see the 45% increase as of last uh, as of 2016, and I think that's huge. So it's uh, still we can say a niche market that you can enter, and. Um, and uh, be su successful. You can see some of the applications that are using, like Messenger, WhatsApp. Okay, Alliance for Open Media is an initiative that wants to create the next generation video format. It's called AV1, and it, meant it should be open and uh, it should work on the web. It should fit any modem or any network, and it should be super secure. And there are backers like Mozilla, Google, Amazon, and uh, Intel. And this codec will probably, it's, uh, it's in a very good stage already, and uh, there should be implemented some kind of um, some kind of format like MP4 to, to host this AV1, some kind of container format, uh, and then we, we would be able to use AV1 on the browser as the F after they implement it. So currently we have a support in all major browsers. Finally, Safari added uh, WebRTC. And on mobile, we have uh, Android, almost all, all the browsers. And on iOS, we, there is a support for Safari, but not for Firefox and not for Chrome, unfortunately. It's very strange that they could add, add the implementation to the, to the WebKit, but not to the WebView, because Chrome, on, Chrome and Firefox on iOS is using WebKit. Uh, I mean the WebView and that WebKit, but it's not added there. Okay, when, whenever you implement something, you would have to use uh, adapter JS, and it's a shim that shims all the implementation problems um, in all of the major browsers. So you write one code, but the WebRTC adapter will take care of the rest. So in, in fact, there are not, not many uh, problems because all of them uh, have been fixed during the years. And you can download it uh, from GitHub, or you can you, you can add it from npm. Uh, I'm running short on time, as I see, but uh, I will talk a little bit more about. Uh, okay, so WebVR and WebRTC. I just want to give you some ideas how you can use both. Uh, let's say you want to create a video chat. In WebVR, you would be able to do it because it's it's real time, and um, and that could give your users a good experience. Or you can build games like table tennis on Canvas, and you can share all of the necessary uh, geometric information on um, WebRTC connection. There is a very interesting project called Proxy Controls JS, which um, gives the power of, um, of, for example, you can use your own device as a controller and you can connect, back, connect it back to the browser. So whenever you use your phone or you are using your phone, you, are using your phone, you can send a, 
geolocation or you can send um, um, any API information uh, to, the, to the browser to expand the experience. And there is another interesting project, uh, WebTorrent, um, which, which is um, a torrent client, let's say, or uh, experiment how you can use torrents uh, on the web. It's very interesting. You, you, can, you, you should take a look at it. Um, so what is WebRTC MCU or multipoint control unit? There are some cases when you want to do some magic on the server side, but you, you are not able to do it because the connection is peer-to-peer -peer between two clients. So in that case, you would have to use a server, right? So you, you, have, to, you have to be peer-to-peer -peer between the client and the server, and the other client would have to be peer-to-peer -peer between the media server and the uh, and, uh, other client. So let's say I have a laptop, I have a user that starts streaming. Uh, okay, the stream gets into the media server, so there is peer-to-peer -peer connection between the, between the client and the server. And I want to, I wa let's say I want to m give a mask on the stream, so I want to put a mask on my face, let's say. So I want to do some fancy stuff. And then I have a plugin that takes my media stream and gives the mask on the stream or puts the mask on the stream. And uh, this all happens in the media server. And the media server will play the stream for, for, the, for the other client. You can do things like that with Curento. We were doing uh, experiments with Curento. And it's a really powerful tool. It's open source. Um, we, uh, you can use Janus or Jitsi as well. These are all open source tools you can experiment with. OK, is WebRTC ready yet? Uh, I think it is getting to a stage where it is going to be ready soon. You can use all of the links uh, below. You, you can get, get information. For example, from WebRTC Hex, it's a blog by Shet Hart. Uh, he's, he's writing interesting things or experimenting around uh, WebRTC. Is WebRTC ready yet? We'll give you the information uh, browser by browser, which API is implemented, which, is, which has support, things like that. There are two. Um, two emailing, or you can subscribe to two services, Real Time Weekly and WebRTC Weekly, that will give you all the all new informations. WebRTC.org is developed by Google. It has a lot of ex examples, um, and BlogGeekMe uh, is is a blog as well where you can pay uh, or subscribe to different trainings, and uh, you, I think you can have one-to-one -one sessions as well. Uh, so from my side, that's all. Uh, thank you for coming this early. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, I probably there will be a Q&A session right now, or maybe not, but afterwards you can ping me, and we can discuss um, your questions. So thank you again.